evaluate the integral of negative x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. There are probably better ways of doing this, but I'd like to take this opportunity to discuss an integration technique that I'd like to call the reverse quotient rule. The method basically reverse engineers the quotient rule for differentiation. Before we actually discuss the solution for the integral at hand, let's first look back at what the quotient rule for differentiation is. From our Calculus 1 class, we've been taught that the derivative of the quotient of two functions f and g is given by g times f prime minus f times g prime all over g squared. For example, the derivative of e raised to x over x is evaluated as shown. We evaluate the derivatives and simplify the expression. Similarly, the derivative of x over x squared plus 1 is obtained using the quotient rule as shown. Lo and behold, the derivative we got here is the same as the integrand we are trying to evaluate. Therefore, the integral we want is actually equal to x over the x squared plus 1 plus the integration constant c. But this is by design. I've thrown out x over x squared plus 1 as the function to differentiate because I know that it's the answer we're looking for. My main objective for the rest of this video is to teach you how to figure out what that antiderivative is. As is the case with most, finding the antiderivative is often far more difficult than finding the derivative. It is easy to find the derivative of x over x squared plus 1, but it might be challenging to find the antiderivative of negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. This is where the reverse quotient rule method comes in handy. The goal is to find the antiderivative as a quotient of two functions, assuming that it exists. It is important to note that this would only work if the integrand is indeed the derivative of a quotient of two functions. For the purposes of illustration, let's suppose that we don't know yet the antiderivative of negative x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Just by looking at the integrand, what would give us a hint, or why would we even consider that the antiderivative for this one is a quotient? Think about it for a while. I'll let you in with my thoughts. I have two reasons to think that the antiderivative is a quotient. First, the integrand is a quotient. If it isn't a quotient, then it is highly unlikely that its antiderivative is a quotient as well, and we might be better off just using integration by parts. The second reason follows closely from the first one. The denominator of the integrand is a square of another function. If we go back to the quotient rule for derivatives, we should note that the denominator is the square of g of x. Following this train of thought, let us assume that the required antiderivative is in the form f of x over g of x. If we compare the integrand to the quotient rule formula, we could infer that g of x is x squared plus 1, since the denominator of the integrand is the square of x squared plus 1. Thus, the antiderivative we're looking for actually takes the form f of x over x squared plus 1. Using this assumption, we apply the quotient rule to find its derivative. We evaluate the derivative and then simplify the right side. Note that the left side is equivalent to the integrand that we have. By equating the numerators, we get that. If you've taken differential equations courses, then you'd realize that what we are now dealing with here is a first-order differential equation. If you've learned methods how to solve it, then good for you. 
Those methods help, but if the antiderivative we are looking for is indeed a quotient, then we can definitely find f using some deductive reasoning. Note that the left side is just a second-degree polynomial, so it makes sense to assume that f should also be a polynomial. Using the method of polynomial degree analysis, let us suppose that f is of degree n. Then f prime is of degree n minus 1, which then means that x squared plus 1 times f prime is of degree 2 plus n minus 1, or simply n plus 1. Meanwhile, the degree of 2x times f is 1 plus n. Therefore, the degree of the right side is at most n plus 1. Since the left side is degree 2, then n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2. Thus, n is less than or equal to 1, which means that f is a linear function or just a constant. Suppose that f of x is mx plus b, then f prime must be m. Apply these assumptions to the equation. We simplify the right side by combining like terms. By comparing coefficients, we conclude that m equals 1 and b equals 0. Thus, f is simply x, and therefore, the antiderivative we are looking for is x over x squared plus 1, as expected. Just to recap what we did here. First, we assume that the antiderivative is in the form f over g because the integrand is a quotient and its denominator is a square. Second, we assume that g is x squared plus 1 because the denominator of the integrand is the square of x squared plus 1. Third, we compare the derivative of f over g to the integrand and concluded that f must be a polynomial. Fourth, we deduce that f must be a linear function using a polynomial degree analysis. Lastly, we assumed f takes the form mx plus b and then deduce the values of m and b. This method is what I refer to as the reverse quotient rule. I don't think this was taught in university courses, and I've just figured this out when I was into solving integrals in preparation for my uni's integration B. Just as I've mentioned earlier, this only works well if the antiderivative is indeed a quotient, so use this method with caution and do this only after exploring other standard integration techniques, including u-substitution and integration by parts. I hope you learned something from this lecture, and as an exercise, I'd like you to use this method to figure out that the antiderivative of this is indeed e to the x over x. See you on the next one. Please consider subscribing if you haven't yet.